Okay, so get ready, because today we are going deep into the mystery of Rh negative blood. It's going to be a wild ride. It is. It really is. I mean, we've got sources ranging from YouTube videos, you know, the kind that talk about like mysterious origins and uh, even biblical interpretations. Oh, yeah. Those are always interesting. They are. But we also have uh, like a medical website article and even a real scientific research article that we're going to dig into. Nice. A good mix of perspectives. Yeah. So we're going to try to get a taste of all of it. Sounds good to me. I think so, too. But before we go too far, let's like back up for a second, make sure everybody listening is on the same page. So Rh negative blood, what is it exactly? OK, so basically you've got these red blood cells, right? Right. And on their surface, there's this thing called the Rh factor, which is a protein. If you've got it, you're Rh positive. OK. And that's most people like 85 percent. So if 85% are Rh positive, that means... The other 15%. Yeah, only 15% are Rh negative. No wonder it's such a mystery. Exactly. And that's where things get really interesting. Because Rh negative blood is missing that protein that most people have. Huh. So... So the big question is, where did it come from? Why is it so rare? Did our ancestors, the ones with Rh negative blood, did they have some kind of advantage way back when? No, that's a good question. Now, one of our sources, it was one of the YouTube videos, actually. They talked about this group of people called the Basque people. Oh, yeah, I know about them. They live in, like, northern Spain and southwest France, right? Yeah, exactly. And apparently they have a really high concentration of people with Rh negative blood. They do. They do. And you know what else is interesting about the Basque people? Their language, it's called Euskara. Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah, and it's completely unique. Like, it's not related to any other language in Europe. Oh. And get this, their genes. They tell a really interesting story, too. It seems they have these strong ties to Europe's ancient hunter-gatherers. Really? Specifically, the Western hunter-gatherers. Wow. So they're like, what, like remnants of Europe's earliest inhabitants? It's definitely possible, yeah. That's pretty amazing. It is. And, you know, that brings us to... One of the most fascinating theories about Rh negative blood. The Neanderthal connection. Hold on, Neanderthals. Like the the cavemen. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now I'm really intrigued. So think about it. Neanderthals, they lived in Europe for a really long time. Hundreds of thousands of years. Long time. Plenty of time to develop some, you know, unique traits. Maybe even Rh negative blood. Now, we don't have, like, direct proof. Sure. But the fact that the Basque people, who have deep roots in prehistoric Europe, they also have high rates of Rh negative blood, it's a pretty interesting coincidence. It is pretty interesting. So you're saying there's a chance that Neanderthals had Rh negative blood and then what, like they mixed with our ancestors? Yeah, and passed it down through the generations. That's a theory, at least. But wouldn't that be a huge jump? I mean, we're talking about traits being passed down over thousands of years. I know, right? It's a big leap. It is. But some scientists are actually exploring this idea. Imagine if having Rh negative blood, you know, maybe it gave Neanderthal some kind of edge back then, like maybe better immunity or something. Hmm, I can see that. Maybe that's why the treat stuck around. Okay, that makes sense. So we've got Neanderthals as one possibility. Right. But what are some of the other explanations out there for this whole Rh negative blood thing? Well, let's picture Europe during the last Ice Age, say, like 20,000 years ago. Okay. It was brutal, right? Massive ice sheets covering everything. People were forced into these small, isolated pockets just trying to survive. Wow. That is it. So basically you're saying that being stuck in these, like, tiny groups during the Ice Age, maybe it, like supercharge some of these rare traits, and Rh negative blood could be one of them. Exactly. It's a phenomenon called genetic drift. Imagine a small group of people, and just by chance, a lot of them have Rh negative blood. Right. Well, they're the only ones around to, you know, reproduce. Right? right, right. So that trait, it gets passed down more and more. Then, as the Ice Age ends, these groups, they start to spread out taking that Rh negative trait with them. It's like a ripple effect from the Ice Age. Yeah, kind of. That genetic ripple effect. Yeah, exactly. That's so cool. So we've got Neanderthals, Ice Age isolation. Anything else that we should consider when trying to understand where this Rh negative blood came from? You know, we do. Okay. And this is where things get a little bit um, out there. Remember those YouTube videos you mentioned? Yeah, the ones. The mysterious origin. Yeah, yeah. They brought up some interesting perspectives, even though they are a bit controversial. A lot of them mentioned, like, a spiritual angle. Oh. 
Right. right. Often tied to, you know, biblical interpretations. Wait, you mean like the the whole Rh negative blood being connected to uh what are they called those Nephilim? You got it. That's the oh, one. Oh, wow. Some people they interpret certain texts to mean that Rh negative blood doesn't even come from humans, that it comes from these Nephilim, yeah. which are, you know, they're described as offspring of well, let's just say beings not of this world and humans. Okay, that's a pretty wild theory. It is. And I'm guessing it's not exactly like backed up by mainstream science, right? Right. It's important to remember that these are interpretations, not hard facts. Yeah, of course, of course. But it's still fascinating to think about. It is. I mean, it really captures people's imaginations. Totally. It's like we're hardwired to look for those like patterns and explanations, even if they take us into the the unknown. Exactly. The videos, they did bring up some specific examples, too. Like uh, they mentioned ancient Egyptian pharaohs and Inca rulers. And they said that they supposedly had Rh negative blood. Oh, yeah, I've heard that, too. And they kind of spun it as this like connection to some sort of ancient, you know, powerful lineage. Yeah. Yeah. And they also pointed to passages in the book of Genesis, specifically Genesis 6.2 and 6.4. Yeah. They see those as potential evidence of the Nephilim and their... Um, influence on human genetics. Mm. Okay, so it's definitely, it's food for thought. But let's shift gears for a sec. Besides all these, you know, ancient mysteries and things, does having Rh negative blood actually have any, like, real world implications today? Oh, absolutely. One of the biggest ones is pregnancy. If an expectant mom has Rh negative blood, mm -hmm. but she's carrying a baby with Rh positive blood, there's a chance for complications. Wait, really? That sounds kind of scary. It can be. It's called RH incompatibility. Basically, the mom's immune system might see the baby's RH positive blood as, you know, a foreign invader. Whoa. And it can start attacking it. And that can lead to a condition called hemolytic disease of the newborn. Gosh, that sounds that sounds really serious. It can be, but thankfully we have ways to prevent it these days. Okay, good. So there's like a treatment or something. Yes. Modern medicine to the rescue. Thank goodness. Right. There's this medication called Rojam. Rojam. Yeah. It's given to moms with Rh negative blood during pregnancy and after delivery. And it helps to stop those harmful antibodies from developing. So it's like a preventative measure. Exactly. That's a relief. So I guess this is something that all expected moms should talk to their doctors about, right? Especially if they have Rh negative blood. Absolutely. Early detection and treatment are key. It makes sense. Now, all this time we've been talking about Rh negative blood being rare, but there's actually an even rarer type out there, right? You're talking about retinal blood. Rena, what's that? It's like the rarest blood type in the world. Only a handful of people have it. Wow, really? Yeah. And people with rhinal blood, they lack all Rh antigens on their red blood cells. So not just the D antigen, but all of them. All of them, yep. That's crazy. It's pretty amazing. It's actually often called golden blood. Golden blood. Because it's so valuable for research and for transfusions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so hard to find a match mm -hmm. that it makes it a really precious resource. Wow. So it's rare. It's valuable. Yeah. But it also can create challenges for the people who have it. In fact, the medical article that we have, it mentioned a case of a woman in Iran with runnel blood. She actually experienced multiple pregnancy losses because of her blood type. Oh, my gosh. That's awful. It is. It really highlights, you know, the challenges that people with these very rare blood types face and how important research is in this area. Yeah, it really does. And speaking of research, you know, one of the things that stood out to me from the sources was this recent discovery of a completely new blood group called the Sara antigen. Wait, a whole new blood group? I don't think I knew about this. Yeah, it was pretty big news in the scientific community. And it really shows how complex this whole system is. It's like we're only scratching the surface, right? Yeah, there's so much more to learn than just the basic ABO and RH groups we're used to. I mean, every new discovery opens up a whole new world of questions and possibilities. It's true, it's true. This is why I love these deep dives. So much to learn. But hold on. How did they even discover this new blood group, the Sarah antigen? Well, it was all thanks to, you know, the power of genetic research and also a huge global collaboration. Wow. Scientists from different countries all over the world, they teamed up, sharing their data, their samples, everything. It was a really amazing team effort. So basically, teamwork makes the dream work. You could say that. Even in science. Especially in science. It just goes to show, you know, how much we still don't know about human blood. 
It's, it's like it's like we're we're still just beginning to unravel all the secrets hidden within us. And who knows what else is out there waiting to be discovered. It makes you think. It does. It does. Well, how about we take a little breather here? Sounds good. Catch our breath. And uh, when we come back, we'll dig deeper into some of those those captivating but maybe not so scientific claims and theories about RH negative blood that we saw in those YouTube videos. Okay, I'm ready. Me too. So those claims about RH negative blood, the ones that caught your attention, like the higher IQ, super senses, even psychic abilities, what did you think about those? I got to say, they were pretty wild. I mean, psychic powers, that's straight out of like, you know, X-Men or something. Right. Sounds pretty far out there. It does. But, you know, even if it's not true, it's still interesting how these ideas get started. You know what I mean? It's like people are always looking for something extraordinary, something that sets them apart. I totally get that. The mystery is definitely part of the appeal. Yeah. But we have to remember, just because someone with RH negative blood happens to be, you know, brilliant or whatever, yeah. it doesn't automatically mean it's because of their blood type. Right, right. It could be like their upbringing, their environment, a million other things. Exactly. Yeah. Like they say, correlation doesn't equal causation. Oh, that's a good one. We yeah. can't just jump to conclusions. There might be a connection, but we need some solid evidence to back it up. Absolutely. And, you know, speaking of evidence and research, that medical website article we have, it really emphasized the importance of scientific studies for, you know, helping us understand all these little variations within blood types. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, the more we learn, the more we realize how complex this whole system is. It's true. And you never know. The real story of RH negative blood, maybe it's even more fascinating than all the myths and legends. You know? I think you might be right about that. But, okay, can we talk about that new blood group for a second, the Sarah antigen? That really blew my mind. It is a game changer for sure. You know what's really cool about it? What? It was actually named after a blood donor, Sarah. One person's donation led to this huge discovery. That's pretty amazing. It really shows how important blood donation is, not just for saving lives, but for research, too. That's true. You know, we don't always think about that. No, we don't. And can you imagine Sarah probably had no idea that her blood would lead to something so groundbreaking? It's incredible. It makes you wonder, like, how many other secrets are hidden in our blood just waiting for, you know, the right person to unlock them? Who knows? Maybe there are a lot more out there. And that brings us to another important point, the whole idea of collaboration. I mean, the Sarah antigen, it was discovered because researchers all over the world teamed up. Oh, yeah. It was like a global effort. Right. They were sharing data, samples, you name it. Yeah. That's how we push science forward. Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly. It's a good reminder that, you know, we're all connected, even on that basic biological level. We are. And, you know, we've talked a lot about the science and the mystery so far. But those YouTube videos, they also touched on something else, the potential dangers of mixing, you know, incompatible blood types. Oh, yeah, they did. They got kind of intense about it, too. It's serious stuff, though. Blood compatibility is critical, especially for things like transfusions or organ transplants. Yeah. Like our bodies have this amazing defense system, our immune system. But if it encounters the wrong blood type, uh oh, it's like all systems go. It sees those incompatible cells as invaders and starts attacking. The videos, they described it as like a war inside your body. Yeah, kind of. It makes sense, though, right? Our immune system, it's designed to protect us from foreign threats, whether it's a virus or, I guess, the wrong blood type. Exactly. That's why blood banks have such strict protocols. They have to be absolutely sure that blood is properly typed and screened before it goes to a patient. It's literally life or death. Yeah, you're right. We don't always appreciate how important that is. But... You know, I'm kind of curious about the historical side of all this, too. One of the videos mentioned that, you know, a lot of ancient cultures had some interesting beliefs about RH negative blood. Oh, yeah, definitely. Throughout history, people have attributed all sorts of, you know, mystical or supernatural qualities to RH negative blood. Like what? Do you mean they thought people with RH negative blood were like descended from gods or something? Some did. They saw it as a sign of royalty, divinity even a connection to otherworldly beings. Wow, okay, that's really interesting. It's fascinating, right? How these certain traits, especially rare ones, they spark those kinds of explanations. I guess it makes sense, right? Back then, without science to explain things, people relied on myths and stories to make sense of the world. Yeah, they did. And RH negative blood, with its rarity and its mysterious origins, I mean, it must have seemed truly extraordinary to them. Yeah, like something truly special. It's a great example of how 
you know, our understanding of the world is constantly changing and evolving. For sure. What was once considered magical or supernatural, you know, now we can explain it with science. It's amazing what science can do. It is. And it brings us right back to the importance of scientific inquiry. Right. It helps us separate fact from fiction, myth from reality. That's a good way to put it. And it's through research, observation, those things that we can really, you know, unravel the mysteries of the world around us. And those mysteries include Rh negative blood. Exactly. You know, maybe one day we'll have all the answers about where it came from and why it's so unique. I hope so. But for now, the mystery continues. Right. <laughs> it does. And, you know, it keeps us curious. It keeps us asking questions. And that's a good thing. I agree. Well, how about we take a little pause here, gather our thoughts. Sounds like a plan. And then when we come back, we'll wrap up our deep dive with some final reflections on everything we've learned about this fascinating topic. Okay. I'm ready when you are. Wow. We've really covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? From ancient myths to modern science. We've really gone deep into this whole Rh negative blood thing. It's amazing how one little topic can lead us down so many different paths, right? And there's still so much we don't know. That's true. That's true. You know, one thing that's really stood out to me is this idea of like interconnectedness. We've been talking about history, science, even spirituality, and it all kind of ties together in a way. Yeah, it's like a big web of knowledge, right? It's not just about isolated facts, but about seeing how everything connects how it all fits into the bigger picture. Yeah, exactly. Like with that discovery of the Sarah antigen, it was a global effort. Scientists from all over working together to make that happen. It really highlights the power of collaboration, right? Yeah. I mean, think about it. One person's blood donation led to this huge scientific breakthrough. It's incredible, right? It's like who knows what other secrets are hidden inside each of us just waiting to be discovered. There could be so much more out there that we haven't even imagined yet. It's a pretty inspiring thought. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I have to ask, what are your final thoughts on this whole RH negative blood mystery? What have you learned? You know, for me, it just reinforces how powerful scientific inquiry is. We've come a long way from those ancient myths and supernatural explanations to actually understanding the biological mechanisms behind it all. But like we've been saying, the journey isn't over yet. Who, who knows what future research will uncover? Yeah, it's true. There's always more to learn. Maybe one day we'll have definitive answers about the origin of RH negative blood. <laughs> but even if we don't, you know, even if the mystery remains, it's still something that captures our imagination and makes us think. I agree. And honestly, the pursuit of knowledge is a reward in itself, even if we never find all the answers. Well said. Well, to all our listeners out there, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the fascinating world of RH negative blood. It's been a pleasure. We hope you enjoyed it. And remember, stay curious, keep asking questions, never stop exploring the mysteries around us. Who knows, maybe one of you listening will be the one to unlock the next big secret. That would be amazing. It would. Until next time, happy diving.